So you've been considering buying a power station, but you're not sure which one to get. On one hand, you're looking for something that's compact enough to take with you car camping, which usually means doesn't have a lot of wattage inside of it. But on the other hand, you're thinking it'd be good to have something at home in case of a power failure. But that usually means something bigger and heavier. Well, I may have the solution for you. This is the Bluetti AC60 portable power station, which is compact enough to take with you when you go places. But when you get it home, you can pair it up with one or two of these B80 extra backup batteries. If you're interested in hearing more about this product, keep watching. All right, just before we begin, a couple things I want to cover. First, I would like to thank Bluetti for sending me the AC60 power station as well as the B80 expansion battery so that I could share them with you. Now, because I have two separate units and they're intended to be used as a scalable unit, meaning you could use just the power bank or you can add a battery to it or two batteries to it, I thought I would cover them separately. First, I'll go over the AC60 power bank and then we'll go over to the B80 backup or expansion battery and talk about how they work together. All right, so what we're going to do is go down to the tabletop and I'll start now with the AC60. All right, just before we take a closer look at the AC60 power bank, I thought I'd share with you what came with it. So here's the accessory box. Now inside of the accessory box, there's a couple things. First off, and very important of course, is the warranty information card. Make sure you fill that out and register your product because it does have a six year warranty and you wanna make sure that you are able to access in the unlikely event that you need to. Of course, there is an operation manual, which is great to have. And there are three cables. Primary cable, of course, is your AC charging cable. Nice that it's not one of those great big bricks that is external to the machine. Everything else is built inside. Solar charging cable, nice extra to have. And a DC charging cable for your car as well. Let's put those items away, bring the unit back into the picture. So what I'll do is I'll go through the key features for this unit first, and then we'll talk about its physical specifications, then its performance specification, and then how it operates. So number of things right off of the top, and this is what makes this unit stand out from so many of the other units, even in Bluetti's lineup, because this is the first power bank with under 1000 watts of storage that is capable of being expanded with two uh, additional expansion pack batteries. So it's a lighter and smaller than all the other ones that Bluetti has that has that capability, meaning more portable, of course. So that's great, I think. It's, it's, it's a nice direction that Bluetti is taking. And you know what else I'm gonna point out right at this time is that I am seeing some great innovation from Bluetti and listening to their customers. So if you've watched on any of my other reviews of the Bluetti power banks, you'll know there's always one or two little things that we like to say are annoyances, certainly not deal breakers, and Bluetti seems to be improving them all. Well, with the exception, there's one, and I'll get to that later, one small annoyance that still exists within this power bank. I'm wondering if you can guess what it is. Everything else though, as I'll point out as we go along, has been improved greatly, at least in my opinion. So this actually is expandable up to 2015 watt hours if you add two of those B80 expansion batteries. Otherwise it has a 403 watt hour battery inside. It has a capability of putting out 600 watts. So the inverter will take, will put out up to 600 watts in AC, but it does have a power lifting mode up to 1200 watts. So you can take it as a surge capacity if, when a lot of devices need a little extra power until they get running, but it can also run items above 600 watts However, it will often reduce the voltage a little bit. So it's not the uh, something you want to do on a regular basis. It has the unique capability, well, not unique, actually, this is another one of those things that Bluetti is doing on most of their units now. And that is that it can be charged with AC and DC simultaneously. And I'll show how that's done in a few minutes time. It can be charged in as little as 1.2 hours. And, and we'll talk about how that works, but basically there are three charging modes. The default or, default or standing charging mode, there's also a slower 
charging mode, which is much easier on the battery over the long term. And then there's a turbo charging mode. And it's that turbo charging mode combined with both AC and DC that allows this to be charged so, so quickly. It does have an eco mode, which is to say that is also the default, is that when it's in operation, if it finds that it's not putting out the wattage that uh, anymore, in other words, the device you're charging is fully charged, it'll actually shut itself down. So I think that's a great power saver as well. It's an uninterrupted power supply, meaning that you can plug items in such as your computer or anything else that you need to have operating on a regular basis and you don't want it to go off if there's a power failure, plug this into the house current and if the power should go down, this battery automatically kicks in and continues to run the device without any interruption. That's a great thing to have when you're using this battery at home, of course. I did mention the six year warranty, but it also has a 10 year lifespan. Now that's an estimated lifespan of 10 years because this has the lithium iron phosphate batteries, which have a 3000 plus number of cycles that they can be recharge to full strength before they start to lose some of their capacity. So another great feature as well. It does have the Blue Eddy Bluetooth app and I'll show you that and how that operates and what you can do with that when we get to that point as well. But here's something I find really special about this battery, especially if you are a car camper as we are, and I'll be taking this battery with me when we go car camping this year. It is waterproof. It's waterproof to an IP65 rating. I don't know of any other batteries that I'm aware of at least that have a waterproof rating. And I wondered about that when it first arrived before I found that in the information, because when you look at this, everything is, seems to be covered and with heavy duty uh, rubber coverings, both the AC outlets, DC, all the other outputs as we'll talk about, all over it has that waterproof look and I said that can't really be the case but it is IP65. Now how they accomplish that very quickly is that they have separated the fans, the cooling fans from the rest of the internal electronics so that any water that's pulled into the device by the fans will not affect the electronics and externally all of these ports are covered. So now that doesn't mean you can submerge it underwater, but what it does mean is that if I left this, say, on my picnic table at my campsite, char uh, set up to my solar panel to charge, and I was away from my site and an unexpected rainstorm came by, I would not have to worry, although I wouldn't make this a regular practice, I would not have to worry about the rain ruining my device. So I think that's a really great feature for any type of battery that you're gonna be using out in the field. All right, let's move on on to the physical specifications. Okay, as far as the physical specifications and of course the performance specifications, I will put all of that in the video description for your reference, but let's just go over it quickly right now. Let's just start with the weight. So it is a little bit heavy for a battery of its size, but considering its uh, capabilities, I, I can understand where the extra weight came from. So it does come in at 19 pounds, which is 8.6 kilograms. So it's not the lightest battery on the market for its capabilities, well, or for its uh, storage uh, capability, but it is not that bad. It's still very, very portable. Height floor or table to the top, 9.21 inches, which is 234 millimeters. Width in this direction, 11.4 inches, which is 290 millimeters. Front to back, the depth of it is eight inches, which is 205 millimeters. And as I already mentioned, it has the lithium iron phosphate batteries, which are the better batteries as they have so many cycles charges with compared to the lithium ion. All right, as far as the performance specifications go for the AC60, let's work our way through. So the basics, it has a 403.2 watt hour power storage capability built into it. It has two AC outputs located on the front right here for a maximum of 600 watts at 120 volts, five amps, of course. For DC outputs, it has right here, starting at the top, a 12 volt lighter port, which will operate at 10 amps. It has two of the older USB-A ports, which will put out five volts at three amps, and one USB-C fast charge port, 
which will put out at one maximum 100 watts. It does also have the 15 watt wireless charging port on top, which has become pretty much a standard feature as well on the Blue Eddies. Now, those are the outputs that are all on the front and on the top. Now, as far as the inputs go, they're located on the left side of the battery, if you're looking at it from the front, of course. So here is where your AC input is here, and that's where you plug that AC cable into. Here is your DC input here, so this is where you would plug your uh, solar charger, or I guess if you had an expand, one of the older uh, battery uh, packs or the uh, uh, AC, what do they call them, wall warts at times is one of the comments for them, so you could plug that in there as well. A couple of unique features, and one is a fuse, so you have access to a fuse right here, and a grounding port, something I haven't seen on any of the other units that I've tested, and of course I guess that would be a great feature if you are using this outdoor and again it did get wet you would like to know that your unit is grounded to prevent any damage there as well on the far side of the battery is the inputs the dual inputs for the expansion battery packs which of course I'll be demonstrating and you can see the fan on the ends as well fan is actually on either end one for in one for out and now here is what's one of those things that Blue Weddy updated their batteries with, which I think is great. And that is, can you see what's missing? No little light, right? No little LED flashlight type thing on the front. It's actually where I think is best suited, which is on the back. Now, it's also more of a lamp, so you get more of a glow. I think I can probably demonstrate that now. All right, got to turn it on first, of course. Once the unit's on. Pretty standard, right? So it has a low, high, and strobe, or SOS, I should say, but the battery does have to be turned on in order, for in order to that to light up. Okay, let's move into the operation of this battery. All right, so this is another area where Blue Eddy has made some innovations, and I think that they have been listening again to their customers and made some improvements, and these I really, really like. So there is three buttons located right here. One is the overall on-off for the battery. It's a short press to turn it on, and you can see the unit uh, lights up, the display lights up very quickly, but in order to turn it off, you do have to press and hold. I guess that's good so you don't accidentally accidentally turn the unit off. So once again, I'll turn the unit on. And if you'll notice that the on off button, it just has that nice green look to it. So it's, it's quite a large button. It's tactile. You can feel it quite uh, easily and find it quite easily as well. And it's clearly labeled what it is. Now, right below that is the DC input and the AC input. And all of that, of course, is reflected on the display. This is a great display. This is the one that Bluetti has gone to, and it just captures and displays all the information you want, both in percentage of battery left, time left on your battery, a visual analog kind of a, a display with the arch over the top there, input and output wattages, all are there available to you at any time. Now, do you remember that I said there was one small annoyance that seems to be carried over with the Blue Eddy? Now, it's certainly not a deal breaker. It's just that, why? Why does it have to continue? This is going to time out in a few seconds, and it just does that. I think it's after 60 seconds or so. The light just dims out. No, no big deal. Quick tap of any of the buttons, and it comes back up again. But, you know, maybe you'd like to have the option of leaving that on, and wouldn't it be great if there was a setting built into, say, the Bluetooth app that allowed you to set it for one minute to one hour, I don't know, of display time? Because, honestly, there. See, it just turned itself off. Honestly... It's not drawing any power, so why not leave it on? Now, I can see turning it off if you don't want this in your uh, your RV uh, showing that blue light all night. So, yeah, it'd be nice to have it turn off, but it's also nice to have the option to leaving it on so that you can watch and see what the progress is of your battery. All right, so that's a simple, simple operation. It's not a lot to that at all. And I'm going to move on now to how the battery packs first work. But first, I have to show you the battery packs. All right, so this is the Blue Eddy B80 expansion battery. And, uh, you know, one of the things I've noticed about this and the AC60 is the overall look. It, it's different than the other Blue Eddies that I've been able to look at and review. This has more of a, I don't want to say industrial, but it does has a more solid feel to it. It has a look that says it's much more of a heavy-duty type 
device. I think it's based on the systems that are intended for household power that are in Blue Eddy's lineup as well. But they've been brought down to this smaller, more compact, more portable design. So yeah, it just speaks strength to me. And it seems to be it built in all over the machine. And when you look at it, it has the same features as the AC60 in terms of waterproof. The ports are all covered again, um, but it's much, much simpler. Now, yes, the primary use for this is as an expansion battery to extend the life of your device so that you have that much more power to draw on. But this can actually work as a standalone power bank all by itself. So built into the front of it, once again, you have another of the DC, 12 volt DC output ports that you could tap into. And you have two USB ports as well. One of the USB-A ports and one of the USB-C ports. And it has an import port of DC. So again, this can be charged by solar. And what's cool about this is you can hook this up to the AC60 and have both of them charged simultaneously through AC, if that's the way you're doing it at home, or you can charge them independently or at the same time while they're hooked up because you have not only the input, the two input methods on the AC60, but this has its own input method. So again, you can get your batteries back up to full charge very rapidly, provided you have the devices to uh, plug them in. This has no AC input on its own. The only way it'll receive AC current is through the AC60, but again, it does have DC input. All right, operation for this is again, very simple, very similar. There is an on off button here. The display is a little different. Well, actually, it's very different, isn't it? It just has the five status batteries or status lights here, which will show you in 20% increments where your battery, st battery status is. That's when it's working as a standalone. Because if you hook this up to your AC60, then of course the display there will, will reflect this battery and the one that's built into it. And if you're looking to use DC independently on this battery, you have that capability right here as well. So this is a great device. Now I've just shown you the operation, but I haven't given you the physical or performance specifications. So let's do that now. All right, the physical specifications for the B80 are very similar to the AC60, except this of course is a little bit heavier because of the additional storage capacity that it has. So this comes in at 21.8 pounds or 9.9 .9 kilograms. It is 11.4 inches in this uh, measurement, which is 290 millimeters. Its depth front to back is eight inches, which is 205 millimeters. And its height from the table to the top is 9.2 inches, which is 234 millimeters. Now, as far as performance specifications, the big thing here is that the capacity, the storage capacity for this battery is 806 watts, literally twice the storage capacity that the AC60 has by itself. As I mentioned, it does have the lighter output port and it does have the two uh, USB-A and USB-C output ports and the one input port. There's no light built into this and there is no wireless charging port on top. But it does have this feature on the side which is it has its fuse just like the AC60. And this is the output port, which is unique to this device, which will connect up to the AC60. So why don't I demonstrate that now? All right, what I haven't shown you about the B80 is what it came with. So it did come with a manual and warranty card like the AC60, but it came with just this one cable. And this is the cable that you use to attach the expansion battery, the B80, to the power station, the AC60. And I'll demonstrate how that works. So you have a output port on the B80 here. You would take one end of this cable and this has a nice spring-loaded locking device that would attach it to the machine and keep it from coming off. It also does have a dust port or waterproof cover as well. So it's very simple installation. You'd literally line it up and push it on and it locks in. It's not gonna come off unless you're ready to take it off at which point you turn the collar. Same thing on the other side, uncover one of the two input ports and Lock it in and now it's ready to go. So what I'll do is just reorient the two devices so that you can see the display on the AC60. 
and let's give it a power button, a quick, quick tap. So what the display is now showing you is the combined available wattage of these two batteries together, which is really nice in that now, instead of just the 403 watts, at 0.2 watts inside of this device, you have the additional 806 watts of this for a combined over 1200 watts of available power capacity and if you were to purchase a second one of these B80s and add it in to the other expansion port then you have over 2000 watts of available power waiting for you to use. Okay so very simple overview of the operation of these two devices. Now let's just talk about the practical uses for them. All right, just before we talk about the practical application of using the AC60 and B80 expansion battery, I just want to mention the Bluetti application that you can use on your phone. So they do have a Bluetooth app that can be downloaded to your Android or Apple phone to allow you to access some of the features of this that you cannot do from the battery itself. Now, rather than to go into great detail, I talked about that at more length in my review of the Bluetti EB3A battery and it's exactly the same. It's exactly the same application and you just uh, pair it with this device and you can access all the same features. And those features include things like the mode of output. So it is set at eco by default, which means it'll turn off over time if it's not being drawn, no power is being drawn from it, or it can be set for constant mode, which means it will be put out the power in a consistent, constant manner. Uh, if you need to change that for whatever reason, you can do that from the app. Now, the same thing when it comes to charging this device. You can access the charging uh, methodology and so you can set it for turbo, which means that you can put in the maximum amount of power into this device and recharge it in the shortest period of time. So if that's important to you to get it back up to full capacity quickly, then turbo is the mode you would set. However, doing so consistently can be heard on the battery. So it's not recommended to do that unless you actually have a need for it. So it is set by default to the standard, but there's also a lighter mode. It's not a trickle mode so much, but it will charge the batteries at a slower rate than it would in standard mode. But of course, that's also going to give you the best lifespan for the battery. So unless you absolutely have a need to recharge these batteries very quickly, I think most people will leave it at standard, but you can change it to the lower mode or to turbo mode, depending on what your need is. And the other thing that you will have access to through the app is the power lifting mode. So by turning on the power lifting mode, that's when you can power devices that actually require more than the 600 watts that this inverter can output, up to 1200 watts. But as I mentioned, it does that at the expense of voltage. So it's you have to think about the device you're going to be using. Now, there is one last thing that you can use the app for. You can actually turn the battery or the light, the LED light on this on and off from the app as well. Okay, nice feature. You know, it's, it's just a nice extra, right? But now let's just talk about the practical application of these two devices. So which one is it that you want to use? Well, it really depends on what it is you want to use it for. So when I opened the video up, I talked about maybe using the AC60 when you go car camping. Maybe what you want is the ability to recharge all your electronic devices for a week or two because this will recharge them for a number of times over and over. Maybe you want to add some lighting around your campsite or in my situation I'm going to be using this for powering a 12 volt refrigerator so I don't have to keep going to the canteen to get ice to keep my food cold. So that's a great use. Now you should also keep in mind you need some way to recharge this battery because it really it only has 403.2 watts of power storage in it. So that'll only gonna last you so long. So you will need some means of recharging it, being a solar panel, which is the great, of course, for off-grid. If you have access to AC, it will take you a little bit of time, but you can recharge it that way. And maybe you're just gonna recharge it when you're driving to and from your campsite by plugging it into your cigarette lighter in your vehicle. So that's great for when you're camping, but when I get home, I want to know that I can count on this for powering things around the house during a power failure. Now, this is where it comes into uh, consideration. What is it that you want to use it for at home? So you have to take a look at the devices you want to power and say, what's important to me? What do I have to have available that I can use during a power failure? And I know what most people are going to say, 
coffee maker, right? I know that's one of the first thing I consider important is to be able to have coffee when I'm at home, even during a power failure. Now, to be honest, I don't use these devices for making my coffee. I have lots of devices for making coffee that don't require electricity. So that's what I would count on. But I did want to know, could I make coffee with this using my Mr. Coffee drip coffee maker? And the answer is no more or less. You could use the power lifting mode for this, but what happens I find is that the water is too cold to make a decent cup of coffee. So how do you know what devices this is going to be capable of powering? Well, most electronic devices will have a label on them somewhere which will tell you what the running watts are requirement is for that device. For instance, my Mr. Coffee says 1200 watts. This only puts out 600 watts, unless of course I'm using that power lifting mode. So it's not going to power that at least very long or very well. What I mean by that is when I say the power lifting mode, it, like I said, the water just comes out cold. The other thing you have to consider is does the uh, device have a surge? In other words, often when you start a device up, it will have need a little extra electricity to get going and then it goes into a running power requirement. So even though the coffee maker says 1200 watts, it probably jumps to 1400 watts for a minute maybe a little less until it starts running and then it will settle down and run at 1200 watts. Well, you have to have a device that's capable of handling that surge um, and before it comes down. So my coffee maker just won't cut it. Um, but so that's the type of thing. But I'll tell you what this will cover, which I love, is the fact that it will power my refrigerator and my freezer. And those things are what are truly important for me in a power failure. So, but still, it only has that 403.2 watt hours. So it's not going to power my fridge or my freezer for very long. That's where the expansion batteries come in. By having the B80, I add another 800 watts, so I've uh, almost three times the capacity. And if I add a second B80, I have 2,000 plus watts that I can count on for running my fridge or refrigerator. Now, maybe it's other devices around your house. You really have to look at them and say, what is it that's important to me? What do I have to have running if I'm going to be without power for any length of time? And that will determine what device it is you want to use because let's face it this is one of the limitations of this device yes you can expand the storage capacity but you cannot increase the inverter output so it's still only 600 watts regardless so once again look at your devices and say do i need what well, can i run them on 600 watts or do i need more if you need more than 600 watts then you're going to have to look at a different device from this and i think i'm going to add that in at this point if there is any cons to this blue eddy ac60 the display is not one of them. I'm not going to repeat that uh, display timeout again. It's the fact that it would have been nice if the inverter was capable of, let's say, 1200 watts. If the inverter is capable of 1200 watts, there, I have a wider range of devices that I can power with it. Now, again, it only has 403 watt hours. So if I start running a device that requires 1200 watts, the battery's not going to last very long. But this is an expandable battery system, so I can add those two of those B80s, and now it makes a lot of sense to have that 1200 watt inverter inside a small device. I expect Blue Eddy is going to do that. They are that innovative and that responsive to demand that you'll see a future battery that will give you greater output in terms of the AC output for the, from the inverter and be expandable to allow you to have it run longer as well. Okay, I think I've given you all the technical information briefly, because again, I'm not a highly technical person, but let's just wrap this video up with a few closing comments. All right, so this has been my review of the Blue Eddy AC60 portable power station combined with the B80 expansion battery. Do you know, I think Blue Eddy is going in a great direction with this. The fact that you can have such a small battery under a thousand watts so that it's portable, easy to take places, and gives you a reasonable amount of storage capacity, but at the same time is expandable to give you almost three times, well, over three times the storage capacity when you add the two expansion batteries. Yeah, I 
I think it's quite innovative, innovative on Blue Eddie's part. And I think we're going to see more of this from them, giving you those options, because basically that's what this is. This is something you start with just the smaller battery, because maybe that's all your needs are for now. But if you want to add to the storage capacity, you can purchase one or two of the B80s at a later time and give you that extra capacity they provide. Okay, I will be putting all the information that I have given you in the video description below as well as the links to where you can take a closer look at these products on Blue Eddie's website. I would ask you if you have any comments or questions, keep in mind, I'm not a highly technical person. I'm more of a practical application person, but put whatever questions you feel I can answer at least in the, the comments section below, and I'll try my best to answer them. So yeah, until next time, get out and explore and take that path less travel because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.